A few months ago, I was regrettably again in the showroom of what I think is a great American knife store, Blade HQ, doing research for you guys, the TMP Knife Nation, which at this point I estimate numbers over 200,000 people. That seems about right at the end of summer 2013. About 200,000 people here in TMP who love the Caravis, who buy off my recommendations, they are passionate about my Hall of Fame blades, and who remain, like me again, a blade addict. If you've never been to the showroom, by the way, of Blade HQ, be forewarned, you're going to find something you want to buy. That's why I say regrettably. Because I know walking in there, I'm going to see something that I want to get, test, and bring to you in video form. And you're looking at just such a blade. And another reason it's regrettable, not just the cost, but the time. Because it means outing up into the mountains, especially for a blade like this, and doing all the work to find out if the blade is great or if it sucks. That's one of my callings here in the TMP Knife Show. And that's why guys and gals watch the show. Well, I saw in the showroom that day a knife very similar to this one, and I was immediately drawn to it. Now, TMP knife fans know that I have my preferences. I'm very open th about them. I'm very consistent, too. I mean, here we are five and a half years into TMP, and you will see me repeat the same things in a knife review of my preferences. But at the same time, I'm very fair, too. I will acknowledge other designs, other approaches, and I try to keep an open mind as we move on down the road in our blade addiction <laughs> together. Because honestly, it is a blade addiction, man. It's just, I don't know, a sickness. A place like Blade HQ, you're drawn to it. I mean, like a moth to flame. I mean, I'm in the vicinity sometimes. I'm like, ah, oh, I shouldn't go by Blade HQ. Don't do it, don't do it. And I do it, and I see a knife like this, which is, by the way, simply outstanding. It is from a new company, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, called Survive Knives out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And the guy who runs it is named Guy, last name Seaford, if I'm saying that right. It is a new kid on the block in the world of survival knives, and I welcome them. This is what competition does. It generates outstanding designs that are put together right, not always, but in this case, absolutely. And it gives us consumers lots more options that will that we will be passionate about. The one I saw in the case that I was drawn to was actually called the GSO 4.1. It's the smallest in the series and it is an excellent all-around camp knife, maybe mini survival knife. A lot of you guys will like that one. But for the test I really wanted to have something more representational across the entire GSO lineup and that's what they call it, the GSO series. And there's a whole bunch of sizes you can choose from in the Survive Knives GSO lineup. Again, the 4.1, it's the smallest, it's a 4.3 inch blade. Then we step up to the one you've been looking at on the table, the 5.1, which is actually a 5.4 inch blade at 15 ounces. Almost the ideal size for a lot of guys that go out in the woods, the 5.1, and that's the one I chose for testing. And if you want to step it up, they'll be making a GSO 6, which is 6 inches. And then I think he named it after a friend of his who died. It's called the GSO 7.7. .7. It's not 7.7 .7 inches. It's actually 6.75 inches. About, I think, a 12-ounce knife in the utility grind on that one. And then they have the Mammoth and Outstanding, which I'm very excited about. I didn't get one to test, but it looks amazing. You guys know I love the big survival knives for... The amount of work they minimize for me up there. The GSO 10, and that one is representative at 10 inch blade length. All from what I can gather, having handled and at this point tested these knives, are outstanding. Just pick your favorite size, go with it, um, don't look back, you're going to love the knife. Amazing. Now, when I got the 5.1 in my hands, the testing was a little bit different this time. In fact, you will see on Blade HQ's channel page that very outing that we did together. Allie the Mountain Dog went up there, Paul and Ben at the time from BHQ all went up in the mountains to thump on the GSO 5.1, the very knife that's sitting on the table. And I will tell you that this 100% made in the USA blade, I will say passed with flying colors. Passed with flying colors. Yes, there is a little bit of tweak on that tip. I'll talk about that. It's my fault. I admit it. That will take us to, I guess, 
philosophy of use. We've been touching on it all along. A survival knife, I always call them woods blades. Now, why do us, the blade addicts, love these survival knives so much? Well, if you go back into TMP history, back to 2008, you will see that one of the very first types of knives that I started advocating, talking about, selling for all the manufacturers was the woods blade. It's because what it represents to me as a woodsman, as a backpacker, to me it represents security. That's right, not like a security blanket, but it can provide me food. I can split wood, I can make a fire, I can make a trap, I can make a spear out of it, I can kill things with it, defend myself with it. Yeah, to me that's security. In a very compact and for what it can do, lightweight package, that's a survival knife. And that's the first and foremost, obviously, philosophy of use for these knives. Strangely, strangely enough, coming from a company called Survive Knives, or SK as I'll refer to it in this review. Are you the same? Do you look at it the same way? I know a lot, I'm talking thousands of TMPers do. We see a knife like this and we see, again, security. Yeah, yes, you kind of have to have some techniques, know how to use a blade. But if you're good at it, you know what you're doing, more or less, you can do so much with a knife like this. Woods blade, first and foremost. And then, as you will see, especially in this video, as I come to the end of it, a collectible knife. Now, some folks watching this video will go, what? Why would it be a collectible knife? It's, you know, it's a, a working blade. You are correct. It is a working blade. But knife addicts like to collect all types of knives. There's guys who have fighting knife collections, guys who have survival knife collections, guys who have tactical folding knife collections. And yes, I fall into all of those categories. Call me sick. You're sick too. You're watching this video, <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll suffer in this blade addiction together. Yes, definitely collectible. I'm going to show you a version of this knife that is ultra collectible, ultra cool. Yeah, wait for it. It's coming. But a collectible knife, absolutely. How about a defensive blade, pure and simple, i.e. a fighting knife? Well, I don't think Guy put it together with that in mind, but I think it could certainly function in that. Because I'll just jump to it right now. It has perfect jimping on top of it. Hmm, maybe someone's been watching TMP knife videos because I've been harping on this ever since I started TMP. How if we're going to have some, number one, let's make it, I don't know, functional. And number two, you should have some. It just gives you more control, right? Then you have double choils right here. So you can really lock the blade in. You have really good traction. No, it doesn't have guards. So I think I will stop a little bit short on saying that it is a pure fighting knife. And you know, guys can get into all types of discussions on what's the best blade shape for that. But as you will see, this knife penetrates with ease into all types of media, materials. Yeah, I could go into that philosophy of use. And I'll leave it at that, POU. That will take us to, again, weight, balance, and feel. Now this, again, is a GSO 5.1. And as I hold it, it feels a little bit forward heavy. And that's exactly what I want up there. That weight can be very good. The blade itself is 11.2 ounces in the GSO 5.1, the almost perfect mid-sized GSO. 15 ounces total with the Kydex sheath, which we will look at in detail. This is a good time to roll in a competitive option and talk about something that to me is very important when you're talking about survival knife. You guys remember this one? No, 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 no. The Buck Punk. Reviewed, tested. It is an excellent mid-sized, lightweight, all-around woods blade. I think with the sheath, the Buck Punk weighs only 13.2 ounces, and that's good. I said as much in the video. However, it falls short in one very important survival aspect. Can you guess what it is? Long-time team peers who watched the review, maybe bought a, punk, a Buck Punk, may know, and it's chopping. It's just a matter of physics. When you have a blade you know, that's a little bit thinner, maybe a lot thinner than this one, we'll talk about that, definitely lighter in weight, with not a forward balance on it, it ain't going to chop too well. And all the force is going to be transmitted directly to your hand and forearm. That's a price for a super lightweight knife. Now, interestingly, the GSO 5.1 only weighs a couple ounces more. 
and yet in chopping I found it to be a world apart than the Buck Punk. Don't get me wrong, I still love the Punk, very enthusiastic about it, it's a HOF blade to be sure, but it doesn't chop well. In a way, the GSO series, we're talking about the 5.1 here, does everything the Punk, punk does, yes it's a little bit heavier, but it chops like a mofo. <laughs> It just does. I was actually amazed at how well it chopped for its size. It's not a very large knife. It's a mid-size knife. One reason is the thickness of the blade. 0.188 inches. That's 3 16 inches thick. I'm glad, by the way, guy, you stopped short of making it a quarter inch. I think that would be overkill. Says I. It's just too much. We don't need it. It would just add unnecessary weight. As it stands right now, the GSO 5.1, and for that matter, any of them larger like the GSO 6, 7.7 7, are going to be extremely capable in the chopping task and that forward uh, balance that I talked about is very critical to that. So it's me. I want to minimize you know TCE, time, calories, and energy when I'm doing woods work up there. Your mileage may vary like I always say. How about that classically designed drop point? I love it. You guys know I love the drop points. Why is that? Uh, well, they're functional for number one. They just work up there. They're a time proven design. This is definitely not the first knife or survival knife that has featured this type of blade profile. There's all kinds. It's just classic. It's proven. Uh, hunters love it. Outdoorsmen love it. They have for decades and decades. I'm so glad he went with a classic design. Great belly right here. And no, it's not FFG. You probably noticed that right off the bat, right? But it's still pretty amazing, and this flat ground portion from about, you know, the flat right here down, split wood amazingly as well. I'm not always about FFG. I've said that in so many reviews, but I think some guys think if it's not FFG, I don't love, love it. You know, like the Punk, that's an FFG blade. I'm talking full flat ground. I love the grind on it. You might find it better for what you do up there, i.e. bushcrafting or tasks like it, the grind. And check this out, I love these flats right here because I use an Edge Pro Apex when I put an edge on a knife like this. Put a wicked edge on it. I haven't done it with this one yet. And these flats allow you to produce a very consistent pass with your sharpening stones. FFG, you can do it too. You're just going to have to mess around with your angles. But back to the blade shape. How about that tip right there? It's a strong tip. And I know you guys have been looking at it the whole review. You're looking at the bend I put in it. You're like, well, wait a minute, man. That's bent. It's not a strong tip. Uh, yes, it is. Check this out. And you may see it in this footage and in the BHQ video they're putting out separately with Ali the Mountain Dog, by the way. That's right. Mountain Expedition Knife Testing. Old school TMP with BHQ Crew. I call them, I think, the BH Crew. BH Crew. <laughs> For short. One of the tests I came up with, just with this knife, I may use it in the future, is I hammered in a galvanized 16-penny nail into a log, pretty deep, and then I pried it out with a GSO 5.1. I will say in that task, it, pro it proved to be very, very capable. During the pry out phase, however, I did go across, or go come up against the steel, i.e. the nail itself, and that's what did this. It wasn't the wood. And I will tell you, you'll see it in the video, I'm cranking on this blade. I mean, I'm jamming it in the log, and I'm really actually trying to break the tip. I'm not going to lie to you. I was seeing if I could break the tip off because it wasn't my knife. <laughs> what? Nothing? Yeah, it wasn't. That was a loner. This one was a loner. I was like, hey, man, you guys mind if I really thump on this thing? They're like, nah, go ahead. And I did. I didn't break it. Yeah, I bent the tip a little bit, but it's because it came across uh, steel, the 16-penny nail. I think a lot of knives would have broken. With the stress I was applying to that tip, a lot would have. But you will see that this steel, which is, by the way, CPM3V, is what Survive Knife says it is. It's just kind of an upgraded A2 D steel, uh, D steel, D2 steel improvement, more or less. Don't get me wrong, I still love A2. I love D2. Here comes a competitive offering right now, previous reviewed, highly recommended HOF blade here in TMP. The Boker Vox Rolled, that's in D2. Great woods blade as well, survival knife. Doesn't have the hacking performance this one does. It's not weighted forward, flat ground. Great knife. 
But CPM3V might be an improvement upon it. I'm still learning about the steel. I'll be honest with you. I don't know that much about it. And this was the first outing up in the woods with CPM3V. It is a crucible metal technology steel. That means it's going to be very homogenous, even carbide distribution, high hardness, and crucible will say it's extremely tough. Tougher than A2, tougher than D2 to be certain. And I don't know if I can say, say it definitively yet, but I would agree with that from what I know now. Having thumped on this blade pretty hard. I'm thinking had I done that prime test with a D2 blade, I would have snapped it off. I'd rather have a knife bend, by the way, up there than break, wouldn't you? Totally. And if I haven't shown you yet, here's a comparison against CPM3V and I think S30V, in case you're wondering. I think some guys will wonder. It is a tool steel, CPM3V. It's not a stainless steel. It's a tool steel. But notice the differences in composition between S30V. So it has 0.8% carbon, if I'm saying it right. Chromium 7.5 versus 14% S30V, hence the non-stainless nature of CPM3V. Vanadium at 2.75%, molybdenum, I never can say that word, at 1.3% or so. All I really care about is how the knife does up in the woods, to be dead honest with you guys. And from what I can see, the blade shape, that is the classic draw point, the good belly, and the thickness of the blade, look at that. Tapering to a very strong tip once again, performed extremely well. I also love the tumbled finish on it. Now, Survive Knives is offering coatings. Black DLC coating, which has been very durable, durable in a lot of my testing here in TMP, is offered. You can get that if you want. They also, I think, are coming out with an FDE coating. I would recommend either one if you're going into high moisture environments. There's my ugly face. Or if you're not going to take care of your blade and keep it wiped down with some type of oil. I love the looks of this one, though. It's just gorgeous. Great bl 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 can't speak blade profile. And that will take us to the handle and guard. Another win for the SK GSO 5.1. For that matter, all the knives in the series. I will start off by saying I would like to have an extra half inch. That's what she said. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, in the handle I would. Seriously. Uh, my hands are on the large size. I talk about this with several knife reviews, how I want a lot of real estate out there. And you might see me when I was chopping with a GSO 5.1. I'm actually coming back here, which worked very well. I was basically just increasing the moment arm and the chop. I can get more velocity that way and more work done with less energy. So I would like another half inch of handle length, but I can live with this one and it's very comfortable even for my large size hands. These are my Carta scales right here and look at how they're rounded. No hot spots, no sharp spots. No sharp corners. Go back to the Buck Punk. That was a minor criticism I had on this one. Is that it came with very sharp handle scales. And it had to be rounded. And that's what I did in the shop. This is rounded. No problems with that at all. Check out this. A recessed lanyard attachment point. Focus here. Kind of trick. Nice. He's redesigned that. I think the earlier versions had a different attachment. These are even better. I did hammer with this, by the way. I think that's how I sunk that nail into the log. With this obviously full tang knife, I just smacked it with a pommel, which is serrated. Or grooved, I should say. I like full tang knives, and I really like it when they give me a hammering option out of a woods blade. Love it, love it, love it. And here's another win for the handle design. Removable fasteners, which he is constantly upgrading, by the way. He has an eye for attention to detail. Changing the materials, trying to make them better. Different... Uh, Fastener options I think you can get on these knives. These are stainless steel, I believe. And if you dunk the knife in salt water or something like that where you have to service it, you can pop those handle scales off off to the race as you go. Or if you just want to take them off and use it as a, a spear, you can do that as well. Great handle. Talked about the double choils already with the jimping. It just locks in. So awesome. I think on some models, by the way, they have a bow drill divot in the side of the handle. You can order that if you want. <clears throat> I got to be honest with you guys. I don't waste time with a bow and drill up there. I mean, to do it, you know, to have fun, to see if you can do it as a challenge, awesome. Second type of cool thing. But as a way to get a fire up there when I'm time limited, calories limited, no way. No way. I'm not going to do it. 
Uh, go ahead, knock yourself out, but that's not a feature I would ever use, a bow uh, drilled divot, but I think some models do feature that. Onto the sheath. How about this, listen? A perfect sheath is what I will say with the GSO series, at least as 5.1. This is a very well-made Kydex sheath. It's super lightweight, has rounded corners, well riveted, drainage hole, obviously. They didn't use too thick a stock, which some manufacturers do, adding unnecessary weight. And look at the attachment. Molly compatible, soldiers take note. Sheepdogs take note. So that is a really innovative and it's very simple, I love simple things, attachment method. So it'll go onto your belt, on your camp belt, or onto some LBE that you got. Huge win on the sheath. Just excellent. And it's another reason I'm super enthusiastic about the knife. And that will take us to quality and durability. Let's talk about the steel real briefly right here. I don't, again, know that much about CPM3V. I am getting experience in it. I'm sharing what I know at this point with you. But I think it will fare well. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm going to lose favor with A2 bladed knives, D2 bladed knives. I'll still love those as well. I'm not a steel snob. You guys know that. I'm very versatile in my steel preferences. Again, all I really care about is performance. And more importantly, when I'm at about 10,000 feet elevation having hiked in, is the knife going to freaking break on me? I don't want that. And I think the answer is looking you right in the face. And the answer is no. It may bend a little bit on you. I mean, I bend all kinds of knives up there. You've seen it on camera, but it did not break. So I will say the quality and durability will be outstanding on the CPM3V Survival Knives. I said that wrong. Survive Knives GSO series. From what I know now, thick stock knives. I mean, these things are strong. The one caveat, again, is it's not a stainless steel that they're using in these models. Subject to change. They could bring on S30 mo S30V models. Who knows? But in the 3V models... Watch out for the rust. Take care of your blade. I don't think you'll have any problems with it. And I'm going to jump ahead, I think, to second kind of cool. It's a great point in the video to run to that. I got a cruise, man. It's getting, I don't want it to be too long. Okay, so this is the one we took up in the, the mountains. We thumped on. Great knife. I like the coloration of the scales. There are various scale colors that you can have. If you go to the Blade HQ page, you'll see various models offered. Here's my favorite coming on the camera right now. Mm-hmm. Yep, and check this out. These are going to be limited to 50 worldwide. What? What are you talking about, nothing? I'm talking about this. A very special limited edition TMP only Survive Knives GSO 5.1. That's what I'm talking about. What? That's right, dude. I'm welcoming, welcoming a company like this to the market by doing a very limited run, 50 pieces worldwide of this knife. And you're looking at my favorite coloration and style for the GSO 5.1 at least. First off, for you guys lucky enough to get one, there's only 50, order fast at Blade HQ if you want one. You'll get this, a certificate, and this is what I say about it. This SK GSO handled some hardcore TMP testing in stride, even digging out a 16-penny nail with abusive prying that failed to break the blade. True that. The CPM3V tool steel is tough and has excellent edge stability. It does. I forgot to show you that, by the way. This is after doing all the chopping, batoning, which we did a lot of, cutting, which was adequate, and let's check that edge out. I've got to use one of my talking point sheets for this because I, again, wasn't prepared. What? This is after testing, not sharpened. Haven't touched it up. Hair popping sharp? Uh, not quite. You can see that. But I'll tell you what, man. I was impressed. It did exactly that. <laughs> Back to the write-up. Most will say it improves upon the proven A2 and D2. The good-looking uh, GSO 5.1 has classic purpose, purposeful lines, micarta handles, excellent jimping, strong tip, four troil, a perfect kydex sheath. We talked about that. For a 100% U.S.-made not knife, cost is competitive. It's not a cheap knife, by the way. We'll talk about that right now. Uh, anytime you get a U.S.-produced knife, especially with CPM steel, it's going to cost money. There's just no way around that. You know, guys complain about overseas knives, and at the same you know, in the same breath, they'll complain about the pricing of a U.S. knife. 
I can't have both. Not that I've seen so far. So I think it's competitive with other high-end survival knives. The signed special TMP version 50 worldwide commemorates the arrival of this instant classic into Woodscraft. There you go. It's a certificate. Each one will be stamped. I won't sign every one, but they will be numbered. This, by the way, is a prototype to see if it was exactly what we wanted. I went with the FDE coloration on the sheath. Love it. FDE coloration on the micarta handles. And this may vary. There's a couple in the series, the 50P series, that were actually kind of browned, and I, brown, and I love those too. Great looking handles, but most will be colored like this. The other ones with brown colorations, I'm not going to tell you what numbers they are because people will request those because they're going to be even rarer still. If you get one, congratulations. That's even cooler. I love them both. Just excellent. And then again, it's going to have the lettering here. Let me focus this. By the way, this features what they call a Peter's Heat Treat. They're in Meadville, I think, or Medville. <laughs> I think it's Meadville, Pennsylvania. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I wasn't familiar with them, but I did some research on it, and from all I can gather, they know what they're doing when they heat treat metals, I'm talking Peter's heat treat, and that's what this CPM3V has on all the GSO series, not just the TMP, of course. So I guess it turned out to be a pretty good looking blade, this TMP only GSO 5.1. Again, I love the handle coloration, the markings, the serial numbering, and the tumbled finish on that very broad and capable drop point. And that might take us back to the collectability POU discussion. I opted for this finish on this knife because I think primarily it will be a collectible. I mean there's only 50 in the world. Are you really going to take this knife out and thump on it in the woods? Maybe put some discoloration on the blade? Rust on the blade? Uh, I don't think so. There might be some guys but you might want to get another GSO series knife if you're going to do that. And if you go again into high moisture environments, you might want to go for those blade coatings. Right now in 2013, I think Guy is going to offer the black DLC and the FDE version, which has a different chemical composition. Both will offer more rust resistance. But for this version, TMP only, collectability, I like this one. It's just gorgeous. Striking looking blade. Get it while you can, they will go quick. And that will take us to competitive options. Where'd our other one go? Here it is. All right. Well, I talked a little bit about the price. It's going to run, I think, normally for a non-special version of the GSO 5.1, around 240 bucks, give or take some. But I think that's a going rate. As you go up in size, down in size, the price will vary a little bit. Again, I think the GSO 5.1 is very representative of the entire GSO series by Survive Knives. Is it worth it? Well, again, consider it's CPM steel. It's made in the United States of America. I would say, yes, it's worth it. And I think Survive Knives is positioning themselves to go up against some big players in the survival knife market. Maybe Busey. I don't know. And those knives can be very expensive, much more expensive than this one. But that's not to say that when you're talking about your hard-earned money, there's not a lot of great options out there. I've been reviewing them all along here in TP, TMP. That's one of my missions. Kind of like the Vox Rald. Kind of a different blade, really, than the GSO 5.1. Again, it cannot hack like this one. No way. But it's still very capable. I love it. We talked already about the Buck Punk. These will all be about half price, by the way, of the GSO. Different steel, though. Steel has a lot to do with it. This is like truck spring steel. <laughs> Granted, a very good one, tempered very well by Buck. I said that in the review, the 50, 5160. But steel and materials have a lot to do with the cost. How about this one? I just reviewed this one not too long ago. The Scrapyard Knives Psycho 511. Excellent knife. 5.5 inch blade. Let's stack it up against this one. About the same size, but not nearly the same chopping capability. And not nearly as broad. And it's weighted, if I were to have to say, probably about mid on this particular Psycho 511. 11.8 ounces, total carry weight, it's around 90 bucks, I think. And it's running in the outstanding sock sheath that I talked about in the review. It's a competitive option. It's a carbon steel blade. You know, uh, the Psycho. I think it's made out of the SR101 steel. And then I haven't really shown you this one, but here it comes. How about the Rodent 6? Now that will go up against the GSO 5.1 
head to head because that is a thick blade it's forward weighted and it can chop very well I know because I've been thumping with some swamp rat knives it's just a variation on the psycho different handle material same steel very capable knife I think this one runs around 150 bucks but that's without sheath by the time you add a really quality sheath in you'll be looking at mm, close to the price of a GSO maybe not quite just a couple competitive options all right but for the money I would say yes an American made knife of this quality crucible metal its capabilities the specialness second type of cool especially with a TMP version if you're lucky enough to score that yeah it rocks perfect sheath highly recommended all the GSO knives I just thumped on the the 5.1 but I can assure you that the 4.1 7 7 5 6 and 10 will do just about the same that's a nothing fancy review I love this knife. See ya.